So we're a wine shop and a wine bar in a suburb of Manchester called Thurmston. Um, so we retail around about 150 different wines. And we also do a few, uh, a small range of like provisions. So like pâtés, crackers, that sort of thing. Um, we've been open since December 2017. Um, basically, for a long time, I worked in a, in a corporate world and I felt a little bit disconnected to the town that I lived in. Um, and I always wanted to have a business in the town, um, which is Ermston. Um, and then years ago, I remember seeing um, an interview with the DJ Moby saying how he lived and worked, his recording studio, his restaurant were all within like a block of where he lived in New York. I just thought, this sounds like a great life. Um, so that was kind of the dream. We had lots of different business ideas um, that I sort of like dabbled with over the years. Um, and all of them had wine as an element to them, but not as the main focus. And we just happened to be visiting some friends and we saw this sort of, they call it a hybrid concept where you have like a shop retailer and um, a bar all on one side. And it was starting to become, back then it was starting to be more common with craft beer, but not as much with wine. Um, and so basically we stole the idea from someone else we saw in another town and thought this is a great idea. Um, and at the same time, the local, there was a local artisan market, monthly artisan market that was starting. So we managed to get our license and find a supplier and we started trading once a month at the artisan market to find out whether people would spend more than, you know, what, what the price of wine is in Aldi or Sainsbury's. Um, and from there, it just really grew. So it kind of, the market was our way of proving concept where it, it gave us confidence that the local community would want to support us. Um, and then two years later, we got the premises and opened. So how do you cut through against, I mean, you're selling wine, um, which I, you could go into a supermarket and buy. How do you cut through against those bigger retailers and those bigger supermarkets? So the, I think the key thing for us is we've got to be different. So what we found um, locally is that um, people will love to try something that they won't see normally. So whether it's um, a particular grape or a variety of wine or whether it's just something a little bit unusual. But then the other thing I think with all small businesses, we've got to be a little bit of trend hunters ourselves. So we've got to be quicker than the supermarkets on certain trends. So things like orange wine, for example, which has become really popular or um, sort of natural wines. It's kind of getting there before the supermarkets do. And um, often by the time things have gone into supermarkets, it's become way too mainstream, we can't compete. But also making sure that we have a story behind what we what we sell. So, you know, a lot of, we don't stock a lot of the stuff that you will see on supermarket shelves. What we tend to stock is something different. And we also try and stock stuff that, like, as well as being a great product, like looks appealing and looks attractive. So um, the wine market has started to go down the road a little bit like craft beer again, where the labelings become way more um, inviting and creative. So sometimes if we taste two great wines that are very similar, but one's in great packaging, we'll always go for that because it's, it competes, you know, for attention in the shop. So, and I think the fact that, you know, all of our team on site can talk about what's there, you know, customers can come in and ask, um, you know, they're looking for a particular thing and we can kind of talk them through, which you just don't get, you know, in, in supermarkets. So how, how have you found the best way to promote that business or promote your business to your local community? Yeah, so I, for us, um, social media seems to be really, really strong. Um, like the free newspapers that used to be delivered around, he just have disappeared over the years. Advertising, sort of like paid advertising, it's, it doesn't really target, you know, how, how, the kind of people that maybe we want to get to or maybe it's too big or too expensive for us so social media we predominantly operate on instagram um, and then facebook and a little bit on twitter but like instagram seems to be a really good way to communicate but then the old-fashioned way of putting up a poster in on site so like if we've got an event we have like poster frames where we can put in posters i mean that still really works well <laughs> Why is it important that people go out and support independent retailers? I think particularly in a suburb, 
and um, and in a neighborhood, um, they they form part of the fabric and they also form part of the security of the whole neighborhood. So you know when you've got lots of independent businesses, you get good footfall, the streets feel safer. Um, they also bring in, they add value to the whole community. And um, you know a good range of a good mix and a good range of independent businesses, I think, add add value. Um, you know, to houses, to the community in general, in general, along with other things. Um, and also, you know, we're, we're employers, we employ 12 people who all, nearly all of them live within our postcode. Um, and I think two live in the next postcode from us. So we, we you know, we provide um, employment um, and career development. Um, you know, and we're just one of many independents in our town. So we're all you know, feeding into that economy, that local economy. Um, so I think it's just good for the community. It's tough at the moment for everybody. Cost of living, bills are rising, both for individuals and families and businesses as well, like yours. What gives you optimism? I think we've been at trading for in these premises for over five years now. Um, and we've been able, when you have a business in a suburb, you do not rely on passing trade. Absolutely every customer is a regular, whether they come in once a month, once a week, twice a week. Um, and the fact that we're still seeing that support from our customers makes me feel optimistic that we can get through the challenges and the headwinds that are ahead of us. And I think our, our community, and I'm sure many other communities around the country, are choosing to spend money locally um, which is also makes me encourages me makes me feel that there's you know some good opportunities ahead for us, and you know we work in hospitality and retail, and you know our nearest big event is Manchester, I guess, from us, which is ten minutes on the train. Um, but you know if you can have a night out in Ermston, you're saving yourself the taxi money. You know drinks are cheaper in the suburbs than they are in the city, so you know. You can support, have a good time, and save yourself money as well. I think so. You know, I think it's a, I think it's challenging, but I think the challenges make independence work harder and become better. So, if people wanted to find you on social media or online, where do, where do they go to find you? So, our Instagram is Calder Wines at Calder Wines, um, and our website is www Kelder, which is K-E-L-D-E-R dot co dot UK.